Welcome to The Chic Show. Today I have my top 10 spring DIYs to freshen up your space. First up is a decorative frame. I used this word from Dollar Tree from last year and painted it with two coats of Waverly White. After removing the canvas from this frame, I painted it with two coats of Waverly Moss. With my finger sander, I went back around all the edges to distress it just a little bit and have that natural wood show through. I made sure that the frame and the word were flush and then I glued the word onto the front of the frame. This is really cute, but I think we can do a little better. So we're going to add some flowers and leaves to the top corner of the frame. I love the way this turned out, but I decided I needed to sand around the words just a little bit as well. I would certainly do this before I attached it if I had it to do over. Positive that this was an original sugar mold but I did find it at a thrift store for two dollars and I decided to take it outside and see if I could sand off that stain and it did sand down beautifully I love the color of the wood but I decided to give it a light staining so I used some Waverly antique wax mixed with some water and I wiped it on and then wiped it back did not want it as dark as it was to begin with, so I panicked just a little bit here. So I went ahead and wiped it back real quick to see what I was going to get. This was exactly what I was looking for, so crisis averted. I went ahead and did this all the way around and on the top of the sugar mold. Once the stain had dried, I took some of this home decor wax and sealed it. There are so many ways that you can style this and I'm going to show you a few of them right now. First I added in some Spanish moss in each of the holes and then I added some succulents. This is a great little spring look, but would also be good year round. This look will be easy to transition over to Easter as well. Before I get started on the tag, I'm going to go ahead and put some hydrogen peroxide, salt, and vinegar in this cup along with a metal washer. I'm trying to age the metal washer and take the shine off of it. I will leave that to soak for a while while I work on the tag. I'm going to be using one of these shorter, fatter arrow signs from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the hanger and then I'm going to take it outside and give it a good beating with my hammer. The goal of this is to make this new wood look old. Back inside, I'm going to score the wood and cut off all three points of the arrow. I'm 
I'm going to sand any rough edges and I'm also going to fill in those two holes with some wood filler. Once the wood filler had dried, I went ahead and sanded down those spots. Now I'm using some Waverly Antique Wax watered down and I'm going to stain the wood front, back, and sides. To add some age to this piece, I'm also going to dry brush it with some Waverly chalk paint in ink. And then I'm going to wipe that back. The stain and the black paint get down in those grooves that we made with the hammer and make it really look aged. Now I'm using a mixture of clear wax mixed with a cream colored paint to give it a white wax effect. These rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree will be perfect for this tag. I'm going to be rubbing those on the top and then I'll be stenciling on the word bloom. I think these stencils were from Dollar Tree as well as the stencil brush and I'm using Waverly White chalk paint for this. I was careful to dry the letters in between each stencil so they wouldn't smear. Now I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue wood glue and glue the washer around that hole at the top. And I think I forgot to hit record, but I did do a little bit of dry brushing with that white wax over those black rub-on transfers just so they wouldn't look quite so new. I added on this thicker jute twine and this project is finished. This video today is part of a playlist called First some of these things I had on hand and some of them I thrifted. I'm going to be painting these three items here with Hazelnut by Waverly. This candlestick I did buy at a thrift store for $1.99. The basket I already had on hand. Now I'm going to hot glue the candlestick to the basket. You could use E6000 for this, but I wanted something that would dry quickly. Now I'm taking this little round and I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of the plate basket. That one I also had on hand and of course that wood piece is just something that I saved from a previous project. Now I'm going to add some hot glue and add the plate basket to the top of the candlestick. This next piece I also thrifted for about 50 cents. So I'm going to hot glue it to the top and then we'll add one more tier. This basket I thrifted for $1 and it has a nice wood bottom so it should hold up nicely. Here's a look at the finished project. piece of scrap wood that I had and I'm going to paint it with Waverly in ink. This is a hanging piece from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove the rabbit and that's what we'll be using for the project. I removed all the embellishments as well. I'm 
going to be painting the back side of the rabbit with Waverly and Ivory. It did take about three coats to cover. While the rabbit dries, I'm just going to sand around the edges of the black sign. Sanded edges kind of give it an outline. Once the rabbit has dried, I'm going to sand around the edge of it as well for the same reason. Now we can attach the two together with hot glue. I decided to go ahead and add that little original burlap bow back to the rabbit. I love the way this turned out. It makes a nice addition to my kitchen area. This is a wood rabbit from Dollar General. I just painted the back side of it with Waverly White. And now I'm tracing it onto this piece of vellum that I got from Hobby Lobby. Once I have the rabbit traced, I'm going to cut it out. I usually prefer the iron-on Mod Podge technique, but for this, I wasn't sure how the vellum would react to the iron. So I'm just using a glue stick and gluing the vellum onto the rabbit. The glue does dry clear, so I'm not worried about the purple color showing through. And now I'm taking my roller and just rolling over that to get out any wrinkles. Now I'm using some of these foam roses from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to hot glue those around his neck. This is a simple but elegant little rabbit. So I'm going to start with this white bunny from Dollar Tree and I'm going to add some black and white ribbon around his neck. And more roses for this bunny. I'm going to use the black ones that I got at Dollar Tree around Halloween time. At this point, I had not decided what I was going to do with the rabbit, so I didn't fill in those holes at the top of his ears, but I'm going to do that now with some hot glue and then paint over them with white paint. And I glued these two little rabbits together for my kitchen. I'm going to be painting the frame of this chalkboard sign to more of a brown color that looks more wood-like and will go with the other items I have for today. I'm also going to be painting over the chalkboard and I'm going to be painting that with Waverly White. Once the paint has dried, it did take a couple of coats. I'm using this You Are a Wildflower Rub-On Transfer from Dollar Tree. And that completes project number one. are familiar with Dollar Tree calendars. They're usually a coveted item 
at the beginning of the year. I always want to use these pages, but I'm never sure what to do with them. So I created a frame so that I can use each picture anytime I want and it's interchangeable. I used a total of eight of these paint sticks from Lowe's. They are the longer, I believe they're 18 inches, and four of them at 13 inches and four of them at 10 inches. These square signs from Dollar Tree fit the calendar pages perfectly, so I used this one, I sand off the glitter, and then I gave it a coat of cashew paint. Painting this is optional because it's not going to show anyway. Now I'm using wood glue to attach the paint sticks together. I'm putting the two longer ones on the side and the two shorter ones at the top and the bottom. And I'm going to do this two times. So I've got four sticks for the top of the frame and four sticks for the back of the frame. Then I'm going to be using one of these square dowel rods that I have cut two pieces at 11 inches and one at 12 inches. Now I'm going to glue the square sign to the frame as shown. Notice the numbers are up on this particular frame, but the other one, they will be face down because that will actually be the top of my frame. Now I'm going to glue down the square dowel rods, the two longer pieces on the sides and the shorter piece on the bottom. This will provide a space to slide the calendar or the calendar pages in and out. You can see I'm taking one of the longer pieces and putting it on the outside of that square. And then the other long piece I'm going to put on the right side of that square. And the smaller piece I will place in between at the bottom. You can see how the shorter piece goes across the bottom of the two longer pieces. I would recommend cutting that to fit in between the two pieces so that it would be up just a tad bit higher and you'll see why in just a minute. Now I'm using my Waverly Wax and I'm going to stain part of the inside of the first frame and all of the outside of the second frame. There will be a gap between the two frames, so you want that to be stained as well. Here's the second frame, and again, I'm staining part of the back of the top frame and all of the front of the top frame. Once both frames had dried, I'm going to glue the top frame on top of the bottom frame. I placed some heavy books on top of the frame while it dried. So you can see here how there is a gap all the way around the frame and if you wanted to cover that I'm sure that there would be a way to do that I wasn't worried about that so much but the top of the frame you can see you can see down through there because that's where you're going to put the calendar pages right through there now down here at the bottom my calendar pages actually slid down too far so I put in some small popsicle sticks in there to fill in that gap just a bit so that it would raise that calendar page up. And that way the hole at the top of the calendar page won't show. So that's why I would recommend the bottom dowel rod that we had there to move it up about a quarter of an inch. It's kind of a simple and crude design, but I am not a builder, so I just wanted something that works and this works. And here's a look at how those calendar pages or the calendar itself will fit right in. This is a great way to display all those wonderful calendar images for each month or each season or however you see fit. 
and you can also store them inside the frame as well. I thrifted this bowl for under a dollar and it clearly had been used for spray painting inside or something, I'm not real sure, but I gave it two coats of Waverly chalk paint and plaster. I painted the bottom, the sides, and the inside. Once the paint was completely dry, I used my finger sander and I sanded around all the edges to bring back some of that original wood. There are a couple of small cracks in the bowl, but I really like the way the cracks give it more character. Now I'm going to be using this rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put that in the middle of the bowl. I was excited to see some new rub-on transfers at Dollar Tree and this one is just really, really pretty. absolutely love the way this turned out and my daughter has already claimed this piece. This project uses three votives and one short pillar candle from Dollar Tree. I used a makeshift double boiler to melt the votives and poured the melted wax into three of the round candy molds. I also used some melted wax to level off the bottom of the pillar candle. Once the wax in the molds was set, I used a plastic spoon to dip out a bit of melted wax and I placed it on the bottom of the three wax pieces and then placed each wax piece onto the bottom of the pillar. These will become the feet. I saw a candle like this at a high-end store for $32. My Dollar Tree candle hack was made for $2.50. Which one of my top 10 favorite spring DIYs is your favorite? Please let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you hit that notification bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to share the sheet. Bye now.